first announcement, there are nine students that were inducted last evening into the Collegiate 100. Would you please stand? One of them is one of them is stuck in traffic. So for those of you that do not know what the Collegiate 100 is, it is an auxiliary organization organization of 100 black men. So um, we they are boy you guys stand one more time. There's one important thing that you have to know. I don't know if you guys understand what being a charter member of an organization is. That means your name lives in infamy. So every student that ever joins this chapter now will have to learn their name. When you are a <laughs> when you are a charter member, you are a founding cornerstone of that organization. Thank you guys. They did a really good job last night. I'm sure if you check people's Instagrams, you can see some of the celebration and that sort of thing. Also, um, let's see. I'm going to do something that I probably shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyway. A.B. Evans, please stand. Judge Lander, please stand. Dr. Braswell, please stand. So, Dean... Dean West is not with us right now because he was traveling late last night. I think his flight left at like 11.45 last night. Uh, Dr. Braswell, myself, and Dean West were all pinned for 100 black men of Greater Dallas-Fort Worth last evening. Judge Lander is also a member of that chapter. A.D. Evans is a member of the chapter from Lexington, if I, Louisville, that's right, Louisville. And he is going to transition. So we are all members of 100 black men. How many of you guys know what Earth X is? If you don't know, you will. Earth X is coming. Um, you guys should have gotten background checks so that you could complete the background check so that you can do Earth X, because you have to have a background check before you can do it. It's going to be Monday, April 22nd through Friday, April 26th. So instead of it being one day as it has been in the past, it's like a mini conference, so you should have received sign-up information so you can sign up for different days to go. So make sure you do that. Um, let's see. I think that's all on that. How many of you have not registered for summer and fall? Those of you that have not registered, stand, please. Stand. Okay. Okay, so so after chapel after chapel I need you to go and find your advisor, either schedule a time or get your advising done today. That needs to happen. Okay? You guys can be seated now. That should happen today, though. Everybody else is registered, correct? Okay. The end of the semester is coming. So, with the end of the semester, there are some things that need to happen. That means those of you that are any are in any of the PQC housing. You need to check in with your RAs or your housing coordinators to schedule a time to check out. Everyone, unless you have special permission from myself or Dr. Grant, you have to be out Friday, May 3rd. There are some students who have extenuating circumstances, so those students are, we, we're already in communication with those students. There are some students who are in the work program who have hours they need to finish. We understand that, but you have to have a approval from, again, from Dr. Grant, who's sitting right there, or myself. So if you have special circumstances and you've not talked to me, because theoretically you should talk to me first and I'll get the information to Dr. Grant. If you have not talked to me, that's going to present a problem for you. So please make sure you do that. <coughs> if there are any young ladies who need
need some community service hours. The Lamnu New Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Teresa, stand please. That, that's Madam President for the Lamnu New Chapter. So they have their 50th year anniversary program in Waxahachie, Texas on April 28th. So they need four volunteers, young ladies, so you can get some community service hours for that. Um, so if you are interested, see me after chapel in my office. Today, y'all say today. Dean Thompson's not in here yet. She's running around. So today after chapel, there is an opportunity. Uh, External Affairs and the Corporate Work Program are sponsoring a Career Insider Services event. They have panelists from CBRE, and they have two interns who were there with them. So it's a commercial real estate panel, and they have one, two, five people who will be talking and giving you information. So you guys need to go to that and get that good information so that you can enhance your opportunities and career. Mr. Washington. Where's Mr. Washington? Which one? Not Mr. Washington, but the other Washington. Where's the other one? And you guys, if you know, you know. Okay, y'all see these two young men standing up? Y'all see these two young men standing up? How many of y'all want to put pie in their face? So, y'all say today. They gonna have the pie set up with the whipped cream and you can just take it and just rub it in real good. I'm gonna get about I'm going to give about five. He's not in here, is he? That's what I thought. He hadn't gotten here yet. Uh, but, uh, Dreesy, you want to tell him a little bit about how my, my pie skills? <laughs> so when the Delta had their event, I had a lot of fun with that. So, yeah, so I will see you guys after, for sure. And then on Monday, April 26th, at 7.06 p.m., Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is having an informational. So if you are interested in learning more about Alpha Phi Alpha, please show up. If you are late, I think there's probably something that will, you probably won't get admitted. Is that correct? Sir? Say that one more time, sir. There you go. So that means if you're after 7.06, you might not get in. Okay, y'all heard that, right? All of you that are interested. Madam President, where are you? Madam President, y'all. if y'all don't know, Taylor Gorey is your SGA president. I didn't tell you to sit. Y'all say tonight, the woman king in the auditorium, sponsored by the SGA, they will have refreshments. Light refreshments, I've been told by Mr. Vice President. So y'all please show up, support them. They are trying to make sure that they do things to enhance your experience. And you guys have to remember, all of these things that we're doing, they are not free. And, and when people spend money and people don't show up, when I ask Dr. Grant for money, she was like, <laughs> you only had three people showed up and you paid $500 for those three people. Not a good so y'all please show up when we have that. And with that, Dr. Grant has a few announcements that she would like to present. Let, let's try that again. Dr. Grant has a few announcements she'd like to present. There you go, that's much better. Good morning, Quinites. I won't take much time, but um, usually when I come and give announcements, it's usually about uh, 
someone has been misguided to make some bad decisions or it's about money and finances. And first, I want to say thank you to those of you who quickly responded and took care of your missed payment plan or paid your balance in full uh, after we um, turned off access last week. On Friday, we did see a jump in students taking care of their business. There are still some, some of which are on-campus residents, which is why I'm back here today to remind you that your payment plan is a promise to pay. It's a promissory note. And if you are behind on that, the college is well within its rights to turn off your access, including removing you from housing. And it makes no sense to have to go through all that at the end of the semester. But if you have an outstanding balance from a 15-week semester and you miss um, two payments out of four, there's what else are we supposed to think other than this student may not meet their obligation. And so it seems harsh, okay, you might even feel that it's mean, but in the real world, this is handled completely different, okay? There is no restaurant, hotel, apartment, anywhere. You can't go to Family Dollar and pick up something and walk out with it unless you're a thief. Now, if you are a thief, then that's a different conversation. But there is nothing in life that is free. Either you are paying directly, you're using student loans or credit to pay, or someone else is paying on your behalf. And that's from the clothes that you have on, the food that you eat, where you live, how you travel and move around, everything. Nothing is free. And when someone gives you something for free, you might want to know what the cost is behind it. So I encourage you to take care of your final financial obligations to Paul Quinn so that you can continue and finish your, fall, your spring semester and so that you are able to register for summer and for fall. Now, I am open to suggestions for incentives for summer and fall registration. Last year, we did Southwest Airline vouchers. We did um, tablets. Um, I don't have any new ideas. So if you have something you want to share with me, send me an email, uh, send me a text message, and we will definitely consider it because um, sometimes people need a little extra motivation in order to do things in a timely manner, okay? So if you've got ideas, please share them. Um, if you are available to volunteer for the Farm Fest tomorrow, there are, and I say volunteer, but there are work program hours available for that. There are work program hours available to assist with graduation and commencement events. Please speak with uh, Mr. Mowgli or Dr. Torres if you are a campus work program student that needs to get some more hours to help pay off your um, balance and earn that scholarship. Okay? All right. You all have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of the chapel service. Let's stand, let's stand, let's stand, let's stand, let's stand. Y'all standing like y'all, it's almost final exams. Y'all stand on up. All right, we're going to have um, Miss Christy Tillman is going to lead us in a song. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you showed up. Mm -hmm. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Test Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Put your hands together. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he, can y'all help me say, oh give thanks, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, oh give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he, for 
for he is worthy, worthy, worth. Good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, one more time, oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yeah. For he is worthy, yeah. He is good, for he is worthy. Oh, yes, he is. He is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, yes he is, worthy of the praise. He is worthy, oh, he is good, yes he is good, he is good. is Rob Villar. I'm a freshman at Paul Quinn College, majoring in business management, and uh, yeah. Uh, I'll be reading Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23, uh, the New Living Translation. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Thank you. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for how good you've been, Father. Some students need the financial blessing. Some student needs to know that you're with them, God. Be, be, uh, be the ruler of their life today, Father. We ask you to touch this chapel, God. We just thank you for our guest speaker today, God, and we'll continue to give your name all the honor in all the glory, in the precious name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated.
God, I offer you praise. <laughs> oh, Lord, we give you praise. And, oh, Lord, we bless your name. Toward us, oh, for your, for your goodness and your mercy. Toward us, for your goodness and your mercy. Toward us, oh, for your, for your goodness and your mercy. To what us, oh Lord, we bless your name for your goodness and your mercy. To what us, we, Lord, we offer you praise. We offer you praise, oh, for you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy of the praise for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We are the praise. One more time, you, Lord, you are worthy. to you. Lord, you're worthy of the praise for your, for your, for your goodness, no, 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 and your mercy to one us. We are for praise. Lord, I offer you praise.
Amen. We're giving honor to God, our Father, in Jesus Christ, His Son, to the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and our God. It's good for us to be here on this Friday morning. Listen, our presence here today isn't because we've been so good or because we've done it all right, but our presence here today is because God has been faithful to each and every one of us and has decided to allow us to be here on today. Let me say, first of all, thank you uh, to respective persons for my being here today. Uh, thank you, uh, Dean Turner, uh, to uh, Dean Bradley, Dr. Bradley, my friend and my brother, who I had the privilege of serving on staff with uh, at the West Side Baptist Church in Louisville, where I served as the youth pastor. His office was right beside mine, and he would always be on those keys, so you can imagine what that was like for me every day. But nevertheless, brother, it was good. It's good to see you. Can we put our hands together for Sister Tillman leading us today in worship? Amen. And let me also, uh, also express my sincere thanks and appreciation uh, to you, uh, the students of Paul Quinn uh, College, to those whom I have encountered already briefly uh, this morning on my arrival. I was like, this is a really friendly group of students. Everybody's speaking and introducing themselves. So uh, celebrate yourselves, Paul Quinn College, for uh, being exemplary models uh, on what it means to be godly students. Listen, I don't want to be before you long. If you would just indulge me for two hours of your time. I mean, it's Friday, you know, so y'all ain't got no plans. Y'all ain't got nothing to do, you know. Y'all ain't got no hair appointments or nails. Y'all ain't got no barbershop appointments. So y'all ain't got no lunch plans, all right? So, but nevertheless, I do want to speak a word to you today, encourage you, um, as you perhaps uh, are progressing towards the end of this semester. Some of you perhaps may be vacillating uh, about what's next. And I want to talk today from a passage in Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. I want to look at this chapter uh, in its entirety. Uh, I won't bore you with, with the length of uh, the chapter, um, but I do, we will cover it all. So if you do have your copy of the scriptures, uh, whether it's physical copy um, or on your smart device, I want you to keep your Bible open and we will journey through Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. While you're turning there, why don't you breathe a word of prayer with me and let's ask God to bless this time together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to share together today. Lord, we are just so in awe of your goodness and your mercy that you show towards us. Father, we don't deserve it, but you see fit to express it to us anyhow. And for that, God, we tell you thank you. God, we have come collectively together today, Lord, as your children, uh, because, Father, you are our help, uh, our help in all things, and help in a very uh, present time of trouble. So, Father, you know where each and every one of us are, respectively, in this room today. I ask that you would speak a word of encouragement, lift up the bowed head, uh, strengthen us where we're weak, God, give us joy to those that are in despair, God. You just meet the needs of your children. Use me today, God, as an instrument in your hand that makes teaching uh, and preaching easy. Uh, Father, we're careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in advance for what you're about to say and what you are about to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone agree together and say it, amen, and amen. Do you have Joshua chapter 3? I just want to read this last verse, but we're going to look at the whole chapter. Now the priest bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. It says all the nation finished passing over. If you're going to pass over, you got to move forward. Today, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about moving forward. Can you say that with me, moving forward? Moving forward. In 1519, a Spanish explorer by the name of Hernan Cortes took orders from the Queen of Spain to go and ex 
explore new lands and territory. Hernan Cortez and about 600 of his fellow men were journeying across the Atlantic. And after a major long trip of multiple weeks, they finally docked and landed at Veracruz, Mexico. Upon onboarding the ship and getting ready to advance to explore new territory, Cortez gave a strange and a peculiar charge and orders to his fellow soldiers as they were seeking to progress forward and find new territory. He proceeds to tell his sword soldiers and his fellow men, looking at them, he gave a strange command. He says, burn down the ships. Burn down everything that we came with. Looking at his men, he said that, and he said, we will either win this victory or we will die. But one thing we are not going to do is we are not going back. And I think that's a word for us because some of us are journeying across Atlantics in our lives, carrying loads, carrying bad habits, carrying procrastination, carrying with us uh, perhaps issues that we are dealing with. But in order to move forward, you're going to have to unload some weights. You're going to have to unload some burdens. It may require you to burn down a some habits if you are going to move forward. You also cannot move forward if you are afraid of what is before you. Watch me because you cannot conquer and be a coward at the same time. God has not given you a spirit of fear but one of power and one of self-control and you need to know that you don't move forward on your own smarts, your own ingenuity or the relationships that you may develop develop or already have. No, ma'am, no, sir. You moved forward uh, because of the God who has been keeping you, the God uh, who has kept you all year from August up to this point. Now, the God uh, who is going to walk you across that stage, the God who allowed you to pass the midterm uh, or to pass the final, he is the one who is orchestrating uh, your steps and is going to move you forward. Uh, But sometimes we can be in our own way of what God wants to do in our life uh, of moving us forward. Who am I talking here to today? Say, yes, sir, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I wake up right 10 minutes before I got to get to class. Uh, I mean, I know the assignment is due on Friday. I don't start until Thursday, but you knew it was on the syllabus all semester. Come on, talk back to me in here. I'm saying today that you got to burn down uh, some habits because you can't walk into a job on procrastination. You can show up at that job late. If you want to, they gonna have you a pink slip in a couple of weeks. I'm saying, uh, sirs and ma'ams, that we've got to burn down uh, some issues. Burn down being on social media 24-7. You ain't gonna miss nothing. It's just a fake. It's just a facade anyway. That ain't they real life. Who am I talking here to today? And you think that if you get enough likes, then that must mean that I must be likable. But I want to tell you that the quantity of your likes does not define the quality of your life. I'm talking better than y'all saying amen in here. And I'm saying that regardless of if they like you, regardless of of if they see your posts, you ain't doing your life for the audience of the people. You do your life and you do what you're called to do for an audience of one. So it doesn't matter if y'all boo me long as God applauds me. That's all that matters. Y'all, I don't know if I should preach or just lecture. I'm trying to figure y'all out. Y'all, are are y'all, are we good? Are we good? I'm saying sometimes you got to burn down some things if you're going to move forward. Listen, the children of Israel have been in Egyptian bondage and captivity for 400 years. Y'all know the story, right? God sends the 10 plagues. uh, He sends the locusts. uh, He sends the frogs. uh, He turns the water into blood. Are are y'all catching this? Well, there's a series on Netflix uh, talking about the Testament of Moses. You go watch that. Uh, It's very good. I I wanted to tell you with that. But nevertheless, 
God and his mighty hand, his mighty power, y'all. He delivers these Egyptians. Uh, he delivers the children of Israel from Egyptian bondage and captivity of 400 years. That last final plague is that he kills off uh, the firstborn, uh, the firstborn. Well, he delivers them. Well, they get to the Red Sea, uh, and they're trapped between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. God, once again, by his miraculous power, he parts the Red Sea. He gets in front of them, and he gets behind them, leading them, but also protecting them. Can I tell you that God is leading you, but he's also going to protect you at the same time? He crosses them over. They get in the wilderness, and they start rebelling against what they've seen God do. I mean, they just saw him deliver them of 400 years of bondage and captivity. He's provided for them miracle bread, manna. Every day they woke up, and they had bread in the desert that they would eat. They had also had fresh Dasani and, and Fiji water to drink each and every day. And he even provided them quail sometimes to make them a sandwich with that manna. Are y'all with me in here today? But nevertheless, they have a lack of faith and trust in God. So God says, you know what? Because you ain't going to trust me, I'm going to leave you in the wilderness. They spend 40 years in the wilderness because of their lack of of faith. I want to pause for the cause here and tell you that you got to be careful because doubting your provider could delay your promise. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, he still possesses the promise and he still takes them into the promise. But because of their lack of faith, y'all, he kills off a whole generation. A whole generation has to die. But nevertheless, here they are now. And at the time of our text, they are now faced with another obstacle in front of them. They are in on the threshold of going into the promised land of Canaan. But in between the promised land of what God had always forecasted for them to be, where they were now was the Jordan River was before them. And here we have the children of Israel, upwards of two to three million people, not including the women and the children. So now God has to do another miraculous work and to take them into this new territory, this new promised land that he had always spoke over them. He is commanding them to move forward forward and not to turn back and listen today's text is teaching us that God will ensure our progressions in life because of his divine presence with us his miraculous power for us and his spoken words to us did y'all catch it nope y'all real quiet I want to say it for you one more time if y'all would have said amen I would have walked off and would y'all could have went on to lunch now I got to explain it to you here it is this is my lesson in one sentence. It's a thesis statement for your paper. God ensures our progressions in life because of his divine presence with us. Say his divine presence with us. His miraculous power for us. And his spoken words to us. That's the whole sermon. Therefore, here's what we got to do in lieu of that. Then you and I must focus on God's glory and follow God's instructions in seasons of convenience and seasons of inconvenience. I know you ain't want to hear that last part. You, you was cool with convenience because it don't ruffle up your schedule. It don't ruffle up what you're comfortable with and your contentments. But no, you got to be faithful, focus on God in seasons of, of ups and seasons of downs. Seasons with a little bit of money in your pockets and seasons with no money in your pocket. Seasons when we can go to Raisin Cane's and Chick-fil-A and Chipotle and eat some lunch. Or today, y'all, I'm just going to have to go in the dorm, boil, boil some water and eat some ramen noodles. Am I talking to anybody in here today? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm saying you got to be faithful in both seasons. And here's what I want to tell us to do. Here's the first thing we got to do if we're going to move forward. We got to focus on God's glory. Say focus on God's glory, y'all. 
There it is. Focus on God's glory. Now watch this, y'all. I am uh, in chapter 3, right? I'm, a, I'm in verses 1 through 6, all right? So read that on your time. Scan that as I explain this to you just for the sake of brevity. I'll just cut across the field here. God gives this command. He says, hey, I want you to watch the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, y'all, was literally the physical manifestation presence of God in the Old Testament. You and I, or for those uh, who are children of God, who have placed their faith in the work that Jesus Christ has done on a Calvary, we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Well, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God uh, would descend at moments in time and ascend back to its rightful place. He would come down and come up. But the uh, Ark of the Covenant, y'all, it was a something visible, something tangible to see that God was with us. The Ark of the Covenant, y'all, was this big 200, 300 pound wooden box. Uh, on top of it, you had some cherubim, which are two angelic beings with their wings touching. Y'all, I'm, I'm teaching right now. I'm, I'm, take notes. Uh, he is, he give these wings uh, and uh, on top of the cherubim was what is known as the mercy seat. Um, so it's not like uh, us now where we can confess and we can go to God all for ourselves. No, the priest had to go make atonement or he had to make sacrifice on behalf of the people so that their sins could be forgiven. Once a year, he would have to go into the holies of holies, slaughter an animal, place the blood on the mercy seat for the forgiveness of the people. This 200, 300 pound box, y'all, Ark of the Covenant, remember, it had the cherubim, it had the mercy seat. But inside of the Ark of the Covenant was the Decalogue, or what you and I know as the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses. This was on inside of the Ark of the Covenant. Also included in the Ark of the Covenant was that manna that literally means what is it? It was bread that they had every day, and the literal meaning of manna is what is it? I like to call a call it wonder bread uh it, it's what is it and it's and it's the ten commandments but it's also uh Aaron's rod that had budded that it was going to lead them y'all I, I don't have time let me tell you that the rod represents that he was going to lead them the manna represented that he was going to feed them but the decalogue was that he was going to govern them and he says watch this uh, that you have to focus on God's glory it represented his presence now we know what the ark of the covenant is but here is the commandment to the children of Israel I want you to stand look at at your Bible, it says 2,000 cubits away from it. A cubit was 18 inches from the middle finger to the elbow on the average man. So 2,000 cubits is equivalent to three football fields. So I want you to stand 300 yards away and you don't move until the Ark of the Covenant move. That was one artist, uh, one gospel artist uh, says that when I move, you move. Okay, I see. I, I thought I thought y'all was going to be a little too young for that, but I see I got a crowd in here whose mama and grandmama listen uh, uh, to, 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 to that gospel artist. He says, when I move, you move just like that. He says, don't move until you see the Ark of the Covenant move. When it stops, you stop. When it rises up, you rise up. When it starts moving, uh, then you start moving. But you got to stand back and stand at a distance uh, because God's glory cannot be taken lightly. You and I are all sinners from up here in this pulpit or this podium to those chairs and to the pews at the church that you attend. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So we can't go into the presence of a holy God with your unholy sinful self. Y'all know what I'm talking about in here. Some of y'all got some habits. Y'all drinking stuff in your cup uh, that's dark. That ain't Coke. Mic check one, two. Come on, am I talking right in here? I was in college one time, and y'all got stuff that's in your cup that's clear that ain't Sprite. Can, can I talk plain to you? 
or, or did you just want me to come in here and just tickle your fannies? I, I know exactly where you are. Some of you got some uh, issues with saying four-letter words that ain't Mark, Luke, or John. Are y'all with me in here today? So here's what I'm suggesting to us uh, is that we got to focus on God's glory and not play in his presence. Here's why I'm telling you, you got to focus on God's presence. And let me give you some Bible just for a little context so y'all can't say that light-skinned preacher was up there making stuff up. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, the Israelites are fighting the Philistines. The Philistines are giving them the business, y'all. They are working the Israelites out so much so that they're able to steal this Ark of the Covenant. They take it into their land and they place it in the the temple of their pagan god by the name of Dagon. Well, the next morning they go into that temple and that pagan god, this edifice, this artifact is lying flat foot face down in front of the Ark of the Covenant. They prop him back up. The night goes on. They get up again and the next morning they go into the temple and this time Dagon's head has been chopped off. His arms have been chopped off because even fake idol pagan gods can't stand in the presence uh, of our holy living God. Uh, I got more Bible for you in 2 Samuel they retrieve the Ark of the Covenant and they take it back to the capital city of Jerusalem. David says it's supposed to be here. We're in God's city. Well, they are putting the Ark of the Covenant on an ox cart. Well, there were clear instructions, y'all, in the Old Testament of how they were supposed to carry the Ark of the Covenant. You weren't supposed to put the Ark of the Covenant on an ox cart. You were supposed to carry it. The priests were on their shoulders walking with it. Well, they tried to do a rush job in expediting God's glory back to its rightful place. But while it's on the ox cart, one of the ox stumbles, y'all, on a rock. And the Ark of the Covenant starts moving and wobbling. And a man by the name of Uzzah reaches out his hand to try and stabilize and prevent the Ark of the Covenant from falling. And what happened? God drops him dead because, first of all, uh, you can't touch God's glory and handle God's glory frivolously. No, you have to be careful in how you handle it. So I'm telling you that you shouldn't play with God's glory, and they try to rush it back. I also want to tell you, you can't rush God's glory. And I don't know who that was for in here, but some of you are trying to say, when am I going to get my breakthrough, and uh, why I can't get the intern, and uh, why don't this professor give me some grace, and uh, uh, why, why I can't do this? I'm saying you can't rush uh, God's glory. You got to trust his process uh, and follow his instructions. But we get to, we, they tell us to stand back. That's the Old Testament. Well, the New Testament Hebrew writer, Dr. Bradley, says that we can draw near. So listen, the reverence should still be the same. But the distance has been closed. Ooh, I guess I should say that for, from Sunday morning. Uh, let, let me see if I can say it another way. Uh, uh, you don't have to stand back anymore and watch. You can go to God all for yourself. Because of a man by the name of Jesus who serves as our intercessor. He's our mediator. Now, sisters and brothers, you can go to God for yourself. You can go to God in your dorm room. You can go to God in your shower, in your car. I don't know what it is or where it is. You can go to God all for yourself. Let me stretch it a little further. You also ain't got to have the preacher to pray for you. You ain't got to have the deacon to pray for you. You ain't got to go knock on your advisor's door all the time. I'm telling you. You, you can get on your knees and go to God right for yourself. Thank God uh, that the distance uh, has been closed, but you still should still reverence who he is the same way. You can't take God's presence lightly. You got to focus on his glory. But the text also tells us not only do we just focus on God's glory, but we have to follow God's instructions. 
he says, Joshua, come here. Go tell the people to watch the Ark of the Covenant. When I move, you move. All right. Uh, and, and then here's what I want you to do also. I want you to get up, consecrate yourselves. That's in verse 5. Because tomorrow I'm about to do some mighty things for you. Somebody receive that? He says, today I'm going to begin to exalt you in the sight of all of Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, I'm also with you. And somebody here can testify to that. You've had to struggle. You've seen your mama struggle. You've seen your daddy struggle. You've seen your grandmama, your sisters, and your brothers. But they're still here. They still made a way. They still provided for you. They still worked hard. You still had food. You still got the practice. They still took you on trips and still had a little money in your pocket. And while you're here scratching your neck, worried, and trying to figure out what's next, the same God that was with your parents and your faux parents and your family members uh, is the same God uh, that's going to be with you. But you got to consecrate yourselves because God is about to do something. This is very powerful language here when this consecration, I don't have time, uh, but if I did, I would tell you consecration is, is that you got to wash yourself. You got to purge yourself. It was the practice of the Old Testament that they would take their clothes off and go rinse and wash their clothes. Well, consecrating yourself for us today as believers means that we got to repent, that we got to confess. Listen, you can't get the blessings of God with wickedness in your heart. Talking about people, downing people, yeah. yeah but you want God to bless you. That ain't how that works. He says you got to prepare yourself, consecrate yourself. This consecration literally means to separate yourself. And you out here comparing yourself to everybody else. What they wearing, who they hanging with, what they driving, what they quit comparing. Because when you compare, you create one more. When you contrast, you create one of a kind. I'm talking better than y'all clapping and saying amen. That's all right. You can tweet me and say that later. Y'all probably don't use Twitter no more. Uh, I'm saying that it, when you compare, you create one more. When you contrast, you create one of a kind. Y'all catch that? Let me see if I can put it in your lap even a, a little better way. Quit being a square when God has designed you to be well-rounded. I'm talking better than y'all saying. I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to deliver somebody from this idea of assessing yourself. Just worry about what God has done in you, what gifts God has given you. Listen, you ain't got time to run in your lane and watch somebody else because you're going to trip. You're going to stumble. Finish and fix your eyes on the finish line and the race that God has set before you. You You've got to follow God's instructions. You got to obey your parents. Uh, you got to show up and let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Be a man and a woman of your word. Operate in integrity. If you say you're going to do something, do something. If you say you're going to be there, be there. Don't show up late. Show up on time. Am I talking to y'all in here? I'm telling you, moving forward is going to require you to follow what God has called you to do and follow his instructions consecrate yourselves so we gotta do what we gotta focus on God's glory we gotta follow God's instructions but here's the last thing and y'all probably gonna tell me off I ain't gonna like me lastly you gotta be willing to function when it's inconvenient because here's what's happening now they consecrate themselves. They separate themselves. They get their hearts right. They do a spiritual EKG on their hearts. Have you assessed your heart? What things need to be purged out of you? What habits do you need to cut off? What people do you need to cut off? Everybody can't go with you to destiny. That's a sermon for another day. But we got to 
Focus on God's glory. Follow God's instructions. But you got to be willing to function when it's in community. They consecrate themselves. Now God parts the waters, and they begin walking over the Jordan River. But here's the thing. The priests are encouraged. The priests are commanded to hold up the Ark of the Covenant in the middle of the Jordan until everybody crosses over. Did y'all catch it? Everybody has to cross over. Why? Because there's two to three million people. This is not a long, this is not a short process. This is going to take some time. Remember, it's a 200, 300 pound box. It's heavy. But you got to hold it up until everybody crosses over. That's inconvenience. And the waters are flooded. He's parted them back, but it's springtime. It's harvest time. So it's a season for the picking. It's a season for blessing, but you're going to have to get your toes wet in order to receive it. But we don't want to hold up God's glory. God's glory can literally be heavy. We also don't want to have to hold it up because what I do, my faithfulness also has the ramifications of blessing somebody else. And God says that I didn't come into this world to, 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 to be served, but I came to give my life as a ransom and to be a servant. Listen, sometimes the greatest ability is not ability, it's availability. Can we count on you? Can we get you to show up? And I know it's hard, and I know it's tough, but I'm saying that you got to hold up God's glory because we can't cross over unless you're faithful. And you're not by yourself. And that's the good news, is that you don't have to hold up the load by yourself. It's multiple priests that are holding it up. You're not the only person who don't have enough money. You ain't the only person who's struggling to get through this semester. You're not the only person who's walked in the shoes that you're in. The good news is, is that we live in a life of partnership. Y'all listen, I'm, I'm out of here, but, and it's been real good. The Bible says they cross over on dry ground. The waters are flooded. Now, I'm no rocket scientist. I'm from Mississippi, so I know a little bit about fishing and nature and stuff. I know that when you mix water with dirt, you get mud. The Bible says that they walk over on dry ground. And the time of the spring harvest is flooded waters. Why does he allow them to walk over on dry ground? Well, at the end of this chapter, this is the first place that we see that the children of Israel has been called a nation. He was changing their identity. Watch me. He allows you to stand on dry ground. He changes your identity because he can't have you tracking mud from your past into the new territory, to the new destination that he's taking you to. And y'all, it's been real good, Paul Quinn, but I got to let you go. But I want to tell you that God has come to save you, to lead you, and to guide you. He has given you a new identity. What is this new identity, Pastor Kirkland? It's I'm a chosen generation. It's I'm a royal priesthood. It's I'm the head and not the tail. That I am above and not beneath. Listen to me. Walk in the power that God has given you. He's given you gifts, talents, dreams, aspirations. Will you keep moving forward? That is is the question. God bless you. Let's stand. Come on, let's give Pastor Kirkland a hand. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to move forward. Look at somebody else and say, you need to move forward too. Now, all right, let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We love you and we praise you. Thank you for that word this morning. We needed that word. Thank you for Pastor Kirkland and all the students. Touch them as they start their finals, God. Let them finish strong. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. If you, if you enjoyed that, you need to come tell him. Choir members, choir members, I need to see you for two minutes. Everybody in the choir right here, two minutes.